Hello and welcome to this session on the SRA accounts rules brought to you by Data Law and me, Janet Taylor from Taylor Mowbray. The main objectives of this session are to ensure that you are clear and up to date on the key principles and the key rules. But I think we need to make something clear from the outset. In the time available, clearly we can't cover all of the rules and all of them in detail. The purpose of this really is to make sure that the fundamentals are there are in place. You're either reminded of them or you're aware of them if you're new to these rules. But to bear in mind that these are the things that underpin some of the other detail that's there in the rules. So you need to make sure that you do have available, downloaded from the SRA's website, your copy of these rules because you will inevitably need to refer to them potentially on a day to day basis. In this session, what we are going to have a look at. Well, the overview of the rules and key principles, responsibility for compliance. Why would you need to know about this? Uh, key definitions, the definitions obviously underpin everything that's going on in the rules. Client bank accounts, the rules around those. Receipt rules and transfer rules, along with the key withdrawal rules from client account. There isn't really anything much in the rules about withdrawals from office account because of what the rules are there to do. So withdrawals from the client account, couple of billing issues, and then we're finishing off having a look at the interest provisions of the rules. Now, as I say, this is looking at the key principles and key rules. What I would also mention is we have put together a second session which looks at some of these rules in a little bit more detail, but in particular looks at common problems and common breaches. And I would urge you to take the time to view that um, session as well, if not necessarily immediately following this, certainly in the not too distant future. Right, okay then, so without further ado, let's have a look at these issues in relation to accounts rules that we're going to cover on our session now. Well, the first thing to mention is, of course, certainly for the time being, there is only one set of these rules, and this set of rules covers all law firms or traditional legal practices as well as all licensed bodies or otherwise known as alternative business structures full copy as i've mentioned on the sra's website now the rules have been around for an awfully long time in various guises updated amended during that period but their reason for existing has always been the same they are there to protect the client's money it's all about the money they're not there particularly to protect solicitors or partners in firms, to protect the staff, to make sure they're paid. They're there to protect the client's money. And you know, make no bones about it, the way these rules are written, the way these rules are reviewed and examined and compliance is viewed on these rules, we're talking about every penny of client money. There's no sort of de minimis around how good you have to be at dealing with these rules. They're highly prescriptive rules. That's the standard to which you have to apply them. That's the standard essentially to which you're tested, you know, also by your reporting accountant when they come in and do their annual review of this. And the SRA take the view that client money is protected if the rules are complied with in full. Okay, then well, let's have a, a look at the sort of introduction, the overall principles, set the scene before we start getting into some of the nitty gritty and the detail. Okay, well, the handbook itself has 10 mandatory principles. Those 10 mandatory principles aren't all directly relevant to accounts rules compliance. So the rules themselves look at five or refer at the outset to five, which are particularly relevant here. Um, there they are. They're all there on the screen, on the slide. And I don't think most people could argue with any of those. A couple of things I would highlight though, whilst the overall principles in the handbook are that solicitors must protect any client money and any other assets, the rules are only dealing with the money. Okay, these accounts rules only deal with the money, not specifically with any other assets that you hold for a client, perhaps let's say as a trustee. So money as a trustee, money acting for other clients, absolutely other assets, not these particular rules that are going to deal with that. And the other thing I'd mention is while absolutely part of compliance is ensuring that your, your firm is run and individuals within the firm carry out their role and responsibilities with sound financial and risk management principles, 
do bear in mind again these rules are only specifically about monies that relate to client matters whether that's client money or office monies on those matters but the rules themselves don't look at how you budget how you run your business